Amen. All right, are you ready for the word? Lord, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for you continually revealing Christ to us and your will for us in our lives. We thank you for everyone who has come here today and experienced a measure of your love as we worship today. We thank you that you will continue to shower us with your love in your presence. In Jesus' name I pray and everybody say amen, amen. So last week, how many of you were here last week? Give me a wave. You were here last week. Or maybe you, you saw the, the message online last week. Anybody? Praise God. So last week we talked about the secrets or the secret to a healthy life. Amen. So we talked about a, the secret to a healthy life which was revealed through us in Scripture in John chapter 15. Uh, and I got to a portion of it. All right? So I didn't finish my message because I guess I prepared for two messages. Because I didn't have enough time in one message. So today I'm going to continue. Uh, the title of this message is Secret to a Healthy Life 2. Not, you can spell it T-W-O or you can spell it T-O-O. Bahala na kayo. Wag lang T-O. Kasi pag Secret to a Healthy Life 2, kailangan may kadugtong yan. Where to? Where are we going to? Alright? So T-W-O or T-O-O. Alright? Okay lang? So let's go back. Let's, let's, for those who didn't get to hear the message, let's do a bit of a review. You know, when we teach, it's good to remind ourselves. Amen. And as a, I guess the teacher in me always needs to review. So John chapter 15, verse 1, let's begin. Jesus is declaring to his disciples, when? When did this happen? This happened during the Last Supper. Bakit sa Last Supper? Kasi itong huling pagkakataon that Jesus would be with His disciples in this manner to celebrate uh, Passover. He has celebrated three Passovers already. And I think maybe this would be the fourth Passover that He would be celebrating with His disciples because He had been with them for over three years. And as he was celebrating this last Passover with his disciples, he knew that his time had come. And as the song of Frank Sinatra said, anybody know Frank Sinatra here? If you don't know him, ask our friend Google online. And I'm sure, and you can ask, hey Google, who is Frank Sinatra? And what are his songs? He's a singer. Uh, and he's also, I think he did some, some show movies as well. Frank Sinatra has a song that says, and now, and now the end is near, and so I face the final curtain. And that song is called My Way. Frank Sinatra did it his way. Jesus didn't do it his way. He did it God's way. How do I know that? Because we see in Scripture, that for he is God. But you see in the garden as he prayed, he said, Lord, if it would make this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus did it the Father's way. Amen? Now, if you're thinking that, is it not the will of Jesus? Isn't he God? Wasn't he slain from the foundation of the earth? But you have to understand, Jesus came incarnate. He came as a man. And as a man... There was a flesh that he had to put on. Jesus from the beginning did not have flesh. But he had to put on this body of flesh. And this body of flesh and this body of flesh has emotions, has feelings. And how many of you know going to the cross and being beaten and scourged and whipped and nailed and suffering. How many of you know your body and your mind will try to convince you otherwise? Amen? Amen. Your body and your mind will tell you, no way. Like if I tell you, starting today, no carbs. My wife's like, okay now. But how many of you, your body will say, that's not the will of God. Bakit? Because God created grain. God created rice. And He created us to enjoy it. Although we know it's good. To limit, diba? But when we say no more, uh, 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 
your will will, will fight against you. Jesus knew the will of the Father and He came and He was obedient even to the point of death, the death on the cross, the worst kind of death. He did it God's way. And I pray that He would be our example. That nevertheless, not our will be done, Lord, but Your will. You know why? Because God's will is all, God's way is always the best way. God's will is the perfect will. Amen? And even how... How smart you think you are. You know, I, I honestly, I, I think I'm very smart. And that's very humble of me. <laughs> but no matter how smart I think I am, I know I will never be smarter than God. And I've humbled myself to that, to know that. Amen? So he, he was going to die. He was going to say goodbye. And this was Jesus' famous last words. This was his last words to his disciples. I'm going to go and now I'm going to share with you something that's very important. And he talks about this parable of the vine. And he talks about this analogy of the vine. Amen? And what is it that he talks about this vine? Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Now, ano po yung vine? The vine would be the main stem, the main trunk, the main portion of a tree or a, or a uh, vine. He's not saying, I am the whole thing. He says, no, I am the main part. The vine is what connects, what the roots are connected to for the source of whatever the plant needs. It's connected to the roots. Amen po ba? And he says that the father is the vine dresser. Ano po yung vine dresser? Yan po sa Tagalog ay hardinero. Amen? So imagine that Jesus is the main vine and the father is the one that takes care of that vine. That's why you have to understand when Jesus spoke. He says, I do not do what I want to do. I only do what the Father tells me to do. He is always saying that everything that He came to do on earth was because the Father had either spoken to Him or revealed it to Him to the Spirit in Him and guided Him and directed Him into all truth. Amen. And Jesus was giving us an example that if He did it, then we should do it too. Amen. I am the true vine. The Father is the one that takes care of me. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, the Father takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, the Father, the Father, come on. What is the word prune? Is it the fruit prune? No. The word prune here is Tinatanggal, or it's, how do we say it? You, pinuputol, yeah, you can say putol, but I believe it's more of tending. Like God gave Adam and Eve the, the, the instruction to tend and keep the garden. I believe that the church is the garden. Amen. And the Father is tending and keeping us. Why? He said, when I see fruit in your life, I will prune you. And when I see that there is no fruit, kakatakot, no? And all of us are here like, oh no, napaka-condemning ang message na to. Hindi po siya condemning, mga kapatid. And, and this is what we shared last week, that the pruning of God is not a bad thing. And it's not a painful thing. Well, it's, that's not true. Because sometimes when we try to let go of things that we hold so dearly to our lives, but are really not God's will, it hurts. Diva, To let go of things. But understand this, God doesn't intentionally hurt us for us to suffer. The reason why it hurts is because we're not letting go of things that needed to be let go. 
or things have overstayed in our lives and God does not want them to be there anymore. Because God doesn't want you to just be good. He wants to bring forth greatness in your life. He prunes us so we can bear more fruit. Then the verse 3 we explained last week. It says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. That word clean means you are already pruned and ready to bear more fruit. Ulitin ko po ah. It says here, you are already pruned and ready to bear more fruit. How? Because of the word which I spoken to you. So how does God prune us? How does God prune us? Amen. God will always use the word, the word of God. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16, that the word of God is spirit breathed. And it is used for what? For doctrine, for reproof or rebuke, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. So that the man and woman of God may be matured. You see, pruning causes maturity. The word of God will cause us to mature. Why? So you may be thoroughly equipped. For every good work. When we live out our purpose and our destiny, we begin to bear fruit. Amen? And I believe a healthy plant, a healthy plant is a plant that bears fruit. Amen? And so that's what our desire is today in sharing this word is that you we, the church, we would be a life, we would have a life that is fruitful. Amen? Not just bearing good fruit, but the best fruit that God has prepared for us. Amen? Are you still there? Now, a bit of a reminder again. It says here, you are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. What was it that Jesus already spoke? Because you have to understand the context of this. He spoke something to them prior to this. And what is it that he reminded them? Let's, I'll jump back to John chapter 14. And four things that we pointed out. This Again, this is just a review. Four things that we pointed out that Jesus spoke to his disciples. Number one, he said, I go to prepare a place for you in my father's house. You see, no longer were they, he was telling them, you are no longer slaves and servants. You are now children. Amen? See, that was one of the greatest things to know, that we are children of God. We are not just servants. We don't just serve God. We're not just there to work in the field. We are there because we are children. Yes, we work in the field, but we get to enjoy the labor of the harvest in which God has called us into. Amen? Look at the person beside you. Say, hello, brother, or hello, sister. You know, I, I shared this before. We don't call each other bro and sis dahil hindi lang natin maalala ang pangalan natin. Oh, sino yan? Churchmate mo? Oh, po. Uh, ano pangalan nila? Bro! Hi, bro. Sis, kumusta po? Di ba? Pero ano pangalan nila? Tigan your life, not metro po. Hindi ko maalala po. And that's why, ha, forgive us sometimes. We, I, I know I said I was smart, but my memory sometimes fails me. But I pray it doesn't. Amen? We understand first and foremost that Jesus is the truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Into what? Into being children of God. Amen? Whoever believes in him has the right to be a child of God. The disciples believed in him and therefore they became children of God. Number two, Jesus says, you know me, you know my father. Number two, we are called as children of God to reflect the father. Amen? Then because we have the Holy Spirit in us, we don't just reflect the father, we reflect Jesus as he reflects the Father. Amen? The Holy Spirit helps us. When people look at you and me, bro, sis, 
I pray that they see Jesus in us. And that was Jesus' goal. Disciples, I pray that when people see you, when I'm no longer here, that when they see you, they would see me. Or they would see the Father. Just like I, when you see me, you see the Father. Amen? That's the words in which he spoke to them. Another word that he spoke to them. Most assuredly, I say to you, who he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also and greater works he will do. See, Jesus was telling them, the good works, the fruit that you need in your life does not come through effort only, self-effort. It comes by faith. Faith in Him and faith in what He has called us to do. Amen po ba? Are you still here? Can you check if the person beside you ay buhay pa? Tignan mo muna kung buhay pa sila, kung, kung di pa... You're thinking, nako, Pastor, alanganin. The Bible says the works that Jesus did, we can do also. You can lay your hands on them and you can say, come alive in Jesus' name. Come forth, Lazarus, come alive. Resurrection power. Amen. So make sure na, yung, yes, very good. Nagising pa yung katabi niyo. Amen. Amen. Nako, ang hina ng Amen. Come alive in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus says the reason you can bear fruit is because I'm telling you today, if you have faith in me, then you are able to do even the things that I do. And the word great to hear doesn't mean we're better than Jesus. It just means it's in bigger, bigger capacity. It's wider in reach because no longer is it one man doing the miracles now it's the body of Christ we are the body of Christ amen and we are doing the things that he has done and finally he says here and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper and he will abide with you forever the Holy Spirit we are already clean we are already pruned and ready to bear much fruit because the giver of that fruit, the Holy Spirit, is in us already. Amen? And that is what allows you and I to bear fruit. Four things, very simple. That because of Jesus and belief, live, believing in Him, we are no longer just co-workers with God. We are children of God. And because of Jesus, number two, we can now reflect God, the Father and the Son, Amen. Number three, we said, Jesus said that because of him being a child of God, we can do the works. We can bear much fruit. Amen. Because number four, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. The same spirit that is inside Jesus that made him the Christ is in you and me to make us Christians or Christ-like. Amen. What is it that we're, is the same with Jesus that makes us Christians? It's Christ. It's the Holy Spirit inside of us. And this, right there and then, again, was a reminder, a review of my last week's message. But there's more. Tell your neighbor there is more. Verse 4. Jesus reminds us, abide in... Uh, this word already in, in, in John 15. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. The word abide means to take up permanent residence. Hindi ka nagbibisita. Hindi ka rin nakikitira. See, sometimes we have guests who come to our house that visit. And then we have other guests that come to our house na nakikitira na. You know the difference? Yung guests na visit, alam mo kung hanggang kailan sila. I'll be here one week. So bisita mo sila ng one week. Yung nakikitira, you're not sure kung kailan tatapos yung bisita nila. 
They're still bisita, pero tatlong taon na po. Naalala ko po, I remember. Sorry ah, hindi ko nilalaglag kapatid ko. If you're watching, sorry. I remember many years ago, my brother and my sister-in-law were having a hard time financially and my parents said, come, live with us. And there were just three bedrooms in the house. My dad's, my parents' bedroom, my bedroom, and my sister's bedroom. And so they told us, you know, they're going to come for three months. They're going to come for three months. Who is willing to... And of course, my sister was still very young there. And babae siya. And of course, I'm so generous. No choice. No choice. So I gave up my room for my brother, his wife, and his two kids. My room was very small. And I moved all my clothes into our bodega, our little storage room. All my clothes, tinanggal naman yung storage at inagay ko yung damit ko sa bodega. So I was sleeping in my parents' room on the floor and my clothes and all my belongings were in the bodega. All right? And the three months became three years. <laughs> and after a while, you're thinking, well, I ko three months lang. You may grace sa three months. Eh. Actually, may grace na rin sa one year. But nung lumampas na ng one year, teka, 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 teka. Alright? See, that's not abiding. Because in that, you're waiting for the time to end. You don't know when it's going to end, but you want it to end. <laughs> Amen? That's not abiding. Abiding is permanent residence. There is no end. And that is God's promise to us through His Holy Spirit. I will give you the Spirit of God and He will abide in you forever. So that's why don't worry. Tako, will I be one of the branches na matatapon? Kasi minisip natin, di ba? Those who do not bear fruit will be thrown away. Look at the verse says, As the branch cannot bear fruit in itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Meaning, the secret to bearing fruit is abiding in Him and He abiding in us. So we have the second part. Do you have the Holy Spirit? And can I tell you that the Holy Spirit is with you forever? As long as you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He is abiding with you forever. So even, Pastor, if I don't obey, no, don't not obey. You know, I've, I've heard this many times. So even, Pastor, kung nagpasaway ako at may ginawa akong madaming mali, I live a life, Okay lang kay Lord yan. Di niya akong iiwanan sa loob-loob ko. Bakit mo gagawin yan? Hindi po po. Example lang. Hindi. Because hindi ka na ganun eh. That's why please don't tell me. Don't come to me. Pastor, even if gumanyan ako ng buhay ko. Why? Why are you even thinking of that? Patay na yan eh. Sorry ha. Ang dami kong wake this past few weeks. Ang dami kong dinaan ang Yung tao, hindi na mabuhay yan eh. Yung kata- well, like I said, they're not dead. Their body may no longer have life, but they are still alive. Amen? Come on, do you hear me? The life in Christ, well, the life that we have is eternal. Amen? But why would you even think about going back to that dead person? Hindi, Pastor. May mga temptation kasi yung mundo na to eh. Yun know, alam mo naman, tao lang tayo. Di ba? Wala naman nakaka-relate dyan, di ba? But what am I saying? Why even think about that? You know, if you vomit, the Bible says, yung aso nga, pag sumuka, hindi niya kinakain yung suka niya eh. Eh tao, yung tao ta- tayo pa? Would you even return upon your own vomit? But worse than vomit, it's dead. 
The Bible says, I have been crucified with Christ. My old life is dead. Ano bubuhayin mo yung patay? Kasi the works that Jesus did, I will do also. Come alive, my old life. Of all the things you're going to bring back to life, why that? Amen? So I want to encourage you. Oh, pastor, what if I do this? Listen, you're not going to do that. Don't think about doing that. Amen? But even if you do, His promise was not based on your performance. He's, he promised, and because He promised, He will do it, regardless of our of what we do. Basta prinamis ni Jesus, gagawin niya. And His promise of the Holy Spirit is, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you, I will abide with you. Come on. How long? Is the Holy Spirit visiting us? That's why I don't say, Holy Spirit, come and visit me. Wag. Kasi kung visit, aalis din. At ang Holy Spirit ay, is very gracious. Hindi siya nakikitira. Yes? Pastor, bakit nakikitira? Bakit palat mo sinasawit? Natamaan ba ako? Ah? Wag po. Wag kayong matamaan. Amen? Amen po? Hindi siya nakikitira. He's not an unwanted guest. He abides with us forever. So we have that first part down. The second part is we abiding in Him. And how do we abide in Him? When we are a part of His body. And are you a part of Jesus' body? We are the church. We are the? So this is talking about the church. Amen? The only ones who abide in Christ are the church because the church are the only ones who are called the body of Christ. And look at your body. Tignan mo yung katawan nyo. Nakikita nyo ba katawan nyo? Kasi kung hindi, nakakatakot po yun. Your parts are connected to you. Amen? And the reason they're alive is because they're connected to you. And as soon as a piece of your hair would fall off, yes, it was a part of your body, but now, since it's no longer connected to you, it is no longer a part of your body. But the hair that is connected, what some of us still have, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. But the hair that is connected to our head is still a part of our body. Amen? We are a part of the body of Christ because we are connected. We abide in Him, and we are in one another. So therefore, can I say, does this verse apply to you and to me? Do you, does, do you abide in Jesus? Are you a part of His body? Amen. Come on, how many of you here? Let me see your hand. You're a part of the body of Christ. Number two, does He abide in you? Do you have the Holy Spirit in you? Oh, nyaris kamay. Amen. Therefore, as the branch cannot bear fruit in itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. The reason you bear fruit is because of your connection to Christ. Period. Can I say that clearly? You have the ability to bear fruit solely on the basis of being connected to Christ. And are you connected to Christ? Come on, yes? Then you have. You, but pastor, parang wala pa. Then keep on tending, keep on sowing, keep on watering, keep on feeding because you have the ability to bear fruit. Amen? And the first fruit that was already done in your life, whether you believe it or not, is your salvation. Amen? That is the first fruit of Jesus' work in our life, our salvation. Are you saved? Therefore, you see that there's already fruit in your life. Kasi naligtas ka, but parang hindi nag-iiba buhay mo. Kapatid, relax lang. 
dadating din yan. But stop relating to the old you. Wag mo nang buhayin yan. Amen? Look at your neighbor and tell them, wag mo nang buhayin yan. Amen? Because you don't want zombies in your house. Anong zombie? Ang patay na bagay na walang buhay sa kanya. See, your old life is the zombie. Ang hirap tumira sa isang bahay na may zombie sa loob. Parati kang nagtatago. Parati kang lumalaban. Parati kang nakikikimagsikan sa mga zombie na yan. Now, I'm not talking about mushroom zombies. Any of those who relate to that. But I'm talking about dead things in your life that God has already dealt with. Huwag mo nang patirahin yan sa buhay mo. Kasi nang gugulo lang yan. It brings fear. It brings condemnation. If there's unwanted struggle in your life continually and God does, wants you free from that. It's already dead. It's already been dealt with on the cross. Let's begin to live our lives free of those zombies in our life. Amen? So the subtitle in this message is Get Rid of the Zombies in Your Life. Amen? Amen? Verse 5. I am the vine. You are the branches. The branch is always connected to the vine. Ang sanga ay nakakonect sa puno. He who abides in me or has that connection, I in him, bears much fruit. So again, it's a reminder. Dahil sa pagkikisa natin kay Jesus, we will bear fruit. At hindi lang fruit. Anong sinabi? We will bear? Ah... Amen. So, ibig sabihin lang, hindi lang isang prutas. Now, I thank my wife for being a gardener. Thank you, Mara. Although I don't help you, and I know you get frustrated with me many times for not helping me, please forgive me. We abide in the same house, hopefully forever. <laughs> Amen. But now I don't need to go to the grocery to get calamansi. We have our calamansi tree, our bush. And since we love calamansi, it's such a blessing. Na, ay, gusto, we, had, we had salad the other day. And I said, Mara, masarap yung tuna salad na may calamansi ang tuna. So she said, oh. So I went out into my garden. No, it's her garden, not my garden. I walked out to her garden. And I walked to the side. And there... So much fruit. Ang daming kalamansi. Gaano ka asi gusto mo? Buti lang hindi asi mong pagmamahal natin. Matamis man. So I, so I reached over and I didn't just get one. I got more than one. I got more than two. I got four. Bakit four? Ah, trip ko lang. Anong meaning ng four? Wala, four. Uh, but I like odd numbers, but anyway. And I brought it inside, and I say, eto, sige, sige, pigain mo na. Piniga ko. Anyway. But you see, because we have those branches connected, we will not run out in Jesus' name. We have an abundant harvest. So when we ask God for fruit, especially the fruit of the Spirit, which is not a struggle. Because our calling is to bear much fruit. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka maubusan ng pasensya. You don't need to pray, Lord, bigyan mo ako ng patience. Because patience is a fruit of the Spirit. And God has called us to bear much fruit. So when if a person is, keeps on pulling that fruit of patience in you, maubusan ako ng pasensya sa iyo. Hindi kapatid, because you abide in Christ, and you are abide, and He is abiding in you. Hindi ka maubusan ng pasensya. Nanjan lang yan. Hugutin mo lang yan. Hugot moment, Pastor. Yes. Pag maguhugot ka, 
manghugot ka ng prutas ng spirito, hindi yung sama ng loob. Amen? So every time something happens and you say, hugot yan ah! Kapatid, huwag kang huhugot ng sama ng loob. Hugot ka ng prutas ng banal na spirito. Amen? We are the branches. We abide in Him. He abides in us. We bear much fruit. For without Him, we can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me. Now, I want to ask this question. Does this pertain to you? Baka pastor, kasi kung naging disobedient ako, if I don't follow the word, if I don't do the commandments, if medyo you know, pasaway ako, then apply yan sa akin. No. If you are any child of God here, any body of Christ here, anybody have the Holy Spirit in you, then this verse does not apply to you. If anyone does not abide in me, that's not true because we abide in him and he abides in us. He is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. Hindi po tayo yan. Amen? So please don't read this verse to condemn yourself. These are those who are not saved. Amen? That's why I thank God for the first fruit that He works in our life, which is salvation. Amen? Verse 7. If you abide in me, do you abide in Him? Pastor, paulit-ulit naman. Kasi inuulit niya eh. Nagbabasa lang po ako. Bakit puro abide? Eh, sabi ni Jesus eh. Bakit niya inuulit? Kasi it's important. What is the important thing you need to know? You abide in Him. You have permanent residency in the heart of Christ. And Christ has a permanent residency in our heart. Amen? This is the assurance of our faith. So having a healthy 2023 healthy life It's not based on how much work we do, but it's based on abiding in Him. And we have that assurance. So you can expect for a healthy spiritual life. You can expect a healthy emotional life. You can expect a healthy physical life. You can expect a healthy relational life. And you can expect a healthy financial life. Because you are connected to the source. If you abide in me, tanggalin mo na yung if. Take out the F. I abide in Christ. And my words, and that's why His words are so important. Amen? You got to know the Word of God. Because what does the Word of God do? Aside from doctrine, correction, Reproof, instruction. The Word of God reveals Himself. Reveals Him. Shows us who He is. Shows us what He's done. Therefore, reflecting who we are and what we can do. The ability to bear fruit can be seen in His Word. That's why love the Word of God. Amen? And my words abide in you. You will ask. Whatever. Now you see, if if His words abide in you, therefore, whatever you ask will be in line with His word. So that's the condition there. If His words abide in you, dehihingi ka in line with the word. But if His word does not abide in you, then you may ask wrong. And you may know that if you ask wrong, you will not receive what you ask. But if you ask correctly, then you will receive. You can ask whatever you desire and it shall be done for you. Ending with this. By this, my Father is glorified 
that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. Do you know what the greatest desire of God is? That we bear much fruit. That when people look at us, they will see Him. Any parents here? Magulang. One of the greatest desire that I have as a dad, and I know Mara has the same even if she has a son, is that when people look at Judah, that they would see us. Hopefully our good qualities. Hindi yung hindi good qualities. Mahirap na yung ano. Ay, nako, Judah. Anak ka ng tatay mo talaga. Ay, naka Judah, you're just like your mom. You see, the funny, the good thing about God is He does not have any bad qualities. He has all good qualities. And you know what God's greatest desire is for His children is? That when people look at us, they will see Him. And by this, He will be glorified. And that's why God wants you to bear much fruit in your life. Can you check if the person beside you is still alive? They're still okay? Amen? Ask them. Ask them, did you receive something today? The fathers, the father delights when we bear much fruit. It is his good pleasure that we bear much fruit that we live a healthy life and that our life will ultimately reflect His. Amen? Father, lift your hands, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you that we are assured today that we are a part of your body. Now, we're not separate from your body. We are a part of your body. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. Thank you that we are also the temple of the Holy Spirit that you live in us permanently. We have that assurance that we are in permanent residence in your body and you are in permanent residence in our body. And because of that, we have an assurance that we are a branch abiding in the vine forever. We are always connected to you. And we thank you, Lord God, that as we are connected to you through your spirit and through your church, remember the two ways we are connected to Christ is through the spirit and through the church. That's why I pray that nobody here gets lost or walks away from the church because that is part of our connection to Christ, that we are connected through the spirit and through the church. And I pray that because of that, we have the ability and we will see much fruit. So therefore, we thank you for your word. Your word that gives us direction. Your word that corrects us when we're wrong. Your word that rebukes us. Your word that instructs us into all truth. Your word that reveals you to us and reveals who we are in you. Thank you for that. Your word and your spirit doing their work together so we would have a healthy life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise.